Hi, so now let us take up some of the topics that have remained and this is going to be a very short capsule and uh, the theme is the least square approximations. We have deferred this for the last week because we were not sure whether there will be time but now I believe that we have time to do this topic and it's a very important topic so it's a good idea to uh, of course, it's it's less important than spectral theorem. So, but it's it is in, it is important. So let's just um, get it get, get it over with. There are two small topics here. Uh, one is called the Bessel's inequality and the Parseval formula, and the other is called the least square approximations. Both these are fairly intuitively clear if you think geometrically and if you think in low dimensions, for instance. And in the finite dimensional setting, these are fairly routine matters. These things become extremely important and uh, pivotal in their, uh, in, 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 in their role when you study infinite dimensional spaces. And you will study infinite dimensional spaces later <clears throat> in advanced courses. But uh, to develop an, before you take the, those up, it's a, it would be a good idea to have a preview of what happens at the finite dimensional setting, which is our setting of finite dimensional vector spaces, subspaces of Rn. Okay, so let's now get to the uh, let's now get to the nitty gritty of the uh, of the matter. So let let us take an orthonormal set of vectors in Rn. It need not be a basis. K could be less than n. K of course has to be less than or equal to n. Of course but k need not be n. Okay, so k need not be n. You're just taking an orthonormal set of vectors. Now, let us take an arbitrary vector v, and then it's an orthonormal set of vectors. Now, you can think of i, j, k in your usual vectors in R3. When you take a vector a in R3, then you can say a equal to a1 i plus a2 j plus a3 k, right? You would say that a1, a2, a3 are the components of a in the direction of i, j, k. But what is a1? You simply take the dot product. a dot i is going to give you a1. a dot j is going to give you a2. a dot k is going to give you a3. Similarly, instead of i, j, k, you got orthonormal vectors w1, w2, wk and I had taken an arbitrary vector v. So v dot wj or the inner product of v with wj will be the j, it will be the coefficient or the component of v in the direction of wj or the, this is, this has a technical name. It's called the j Fourier coefficient of v with respect to the set, ordered set of vectors s. Now look at, <clears throat> now subtract off these components. So subtract off from V, uh, the V dot W1, W1, V dot WK, WK. Subtract off these components and you're left with a vector and this vector will have no component in the direction of W1, W2, WK. So you're subtracted off the components of V along these vectors W1, W2, WK. This has no components in these directions. So this difference v minus after subtract off the component in the w1 direction w2 direction the other wk direction this this uh, this residual vector is going to be orthogonal to w1 w2 wk right because there's no components in these directions so it's going to be perpendicular to w1 w2 wk so uh, now so what happens now you can uh, let us apply to, apply apply the uh, so if it is if it is orthogonal to w1 w2 wk it's orthogonal to every linear combination of w1 w2 wk in particular it is going to be orthogonal to v dot w1 w1 plus v dot w2 w2 plus dot 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 v dot wk wk so i can apply the pythagoras theorem <clears throat> and I apply the pythagoras theorem i will get that norm of v minus <clears throat> v dot w1 w1 minus dot 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 minus v dot wk wk squared plus the norm of v dot w1 w1 plus dot 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 plus v dot wk wk squared will be equal to norm v squared. Now what I'm going to do is that the, so I'm uh, left hand side is the sum of two squares so I'm going to knock off one of the terms. If I knock off one of the terms 
the equality will become an inequality right the equality will become an inequality now also as a further simplification suppose you compute the second term on the left hand side v dot w1 w1 plus dot 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 v dot wk wk squared if you actually calculate the norm squared take the inner product of this vector with itself use the fact that wi and wj are orthogonal you will simply get v dot w1 mod square plus dot 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 v dot wk mod square so this particular term on the left hand side simplifies and the and the and the and you get norm v square as i said the equality will become an inequality will get norm v square greater than or equal to mod v dot w1 square plus dot 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 mod v dot wk square this inequality is called the bessel's inequality this inequality is called the bessel's inequality when will equality hold in bessel's inequality equality will hold in bessel's inequality if whatever you are thrown away on the left hand side is zero your left hand side is the sum of two squares one of the terms you are dropping and the equality became an inequality but the equality will stay as an equality if whatever you are dropping is zero whatever you are dropping will be zero if and only if v is a linear combination of w1 w2 wk because the stuff that you are dropping should be zero when will it be zero if and only if v is a linear combination of w1 w2 wk so i said equality holds if and only if v lies in the linear span of w1 w2 wk now suppose if the equality holds for all v's if the equality holds for every choice of v that means every v must be a linear combination of w1 w2 wk that means that w1 w2 wk must span whole of rn i got that it is already linearly independent because they are orthonormal and if it also spans it must be a basis that will happen if and only if k equals n so you got equality will hold for all vectors if and only if it's a basis and this equality will be called the parseval formula now we have proved this very easily in finite dimension in sub in, in the rn setting the parseval formula is a very significant business in the infinite dimensional setting anyway so this is the bessel's inequality and parseval formula well, let's go to the next one the least square approximation again you should think geometrically first you got a k dimensional subspace of rn you can think of a plane in r3 just to begin with and you have taken a vector b in rn this vector b is usually not going to lie on this v or if you take a plane in r3 you have picked a vector b which is outside the plane in general in general so now the question is you want to find the distance of b from an arbitrary point in the plane so you got a point v varying over this w uh, over this v you got a you got this little v varying over capital v so if you want to if you want to fix ideas you can think of r3 you can take up think of a plane in r3 and the vector v varies along the plane and you are finding the distance between the point b and this vari variable point v and you want to minimize the distance you want to minimize the square of this distance so the problem is to find a point so to uh, to find the minimizer of this distance of v from b square that is find a point b not such that the squared distance norm b minus v the whole square is least when v equal to b not when v equal to b not and among as v varies over capital v <coughs> the mo problem this problem of finding you in r3 you already done this problem in r3 in your 12th standard coordinate geometry you know how to find the point on a plane which is you will say that that point is a foot to the perpendicular you are going to say that point at which this uh, this squared uh, square of the distance is minimized is going to be the foot of the perper perpendicular drawn from b to the plane in other words 
this vector b naught this vector b naught is going to be orth uh, is is going to be orthogonal to b minus b naught so this and you know and you this problem has a unique solution and the solution is given by b naught equal to b dot w1 w1 plus dot 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 d dot wk wk where w1 w2 wk is a orthonormal basis for the subspace v you have taken an orthonormal basis for the vector subspace v first let us explain why the solution if up to this problem must be unique you will say that geometrically this is evident geometrically this is probably evident let us try to understand this algebraically now geometrically this will be evident if this inner product is a usual dot product in r3 in r3 the matter is evident if you interpret this triangular bracket as the usual dot product but the remarkable fact is that not only is is the result true in any number of dimensions it is also true for any inner product it doesn't have to be the usual dot product it can be any inner product it will still be true so that's what the algebra tells us so let us discuss uniqueness suppose for example this minimum is attained suppose there are two solutions to the minimum problem b not prime and b not double prime okay so b not prime and b not double prime are both vectors in v such that the norm so such that this uh, both of them are solving the minimizer norm now where is b not prime lying it is lying in v where is b not double prime lying it is also lying in v v is a vector space so b not plus b sorry so b not prime plus b not double prime will also be in the vector space b not prime minus b not double prime also lies in this vector space v so what we are going to do is that we are going to take this midpoint b not prime plus b not double prime by 2 that lies in my vector space v and since b not double prime is a minimizer this squared distance must be less than or equal to the squared distance of b from this midpoint since b not prime is a minimizer b minus b not prime squared is less than or equal to the distance between b and the midpoint squared so we got these two equations let us add them up b minus b not double prime squared plus b minus b not prime squared less than or equal to uh, that is uh, the, uh, the same thing on the right hand side so it becomes 2 and i clear the denominator i did the algebra by clearing the denominator and so i'll be left with one half of norm of 2b minus b not prime plus b not this 2b minus bracket b not prime plus b not double prime i'm writing, i'm going to write it as b minus b not prime plus b minus b not double prime so this inequality is going to be re rewritten and this factor of 2 i'm going to multiply this whole e whole inequality by 2 so what do we get two times norm of b minus b not prime squared plus norm of b minus b not double prime squared less than or equal to b minus b not prime plus b minus b not double prime square now let us use the parallelogram law we have studied the parallelogram law and the left hand side and this left hand side is going to be what apply the parallelogram law and replace the left hand side what i going to replace it with b not minus b not prime plus b not minus b not double prime plus a norm square plus the difference b b minus b not prime minus b minus b not double prime norm square but that is nothing but b not prime minus b not double prime square now this one of these terms cancels out this term here cancels out and we are left with mod b not prime minus b not double prime square less than or equal to 0 but the but this is always going to be non negative so compulsorily this must be zero this norm this uh, this difference must have zero norm remember when uh, that means that call this distance beta 
So norm beta squared is zero. Means what? Inner product of beta with itself is zero. Remember that Latin if and only if beta is zero. That means B naught prime minus B naught double prime must be zero. So B naught prime must be equal to B naught double prime. As a nice application of the parallelogram law, we have proved uniqueness of the minimizer. Now we have to prove the existence of the minimizer. Okay, so let us prove the existence of the minimizer. Now that we know that the minimizer is unique, it doesn't matter how we arrive at it. If you arrive, if you no matter that there would be several ways of arriving at the minimizer, but whatever method you choose, if you get a solution, that solution is going to be the same. If two different people try to solve the problem in two different ways, their solutions have to match because it's unique. Solution is unique. So you may think that oh, let's try to use calculus. Go ahead, try to use calculus. That's your that that that's I leave I invite you to use calculus and try to do the minimization problem it's a very good it's a very good approach but i'm going to use algebra instead of using calculus i'm going to use algebra simply take an orthonormal basis w1 w2 wk of v and you want a minimizer the minimizing problem that you're going to that you're going that the minimizer the putative minimize uh, the minimizer b not the minimizer that you're trying to seek let us try to seek it in uh, it's going uh, we're going to seek it in this form b we're going to prove that this b not equal to b dot b dot w one w one plus dot 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 b dot w k. We are going to show that this is this works. Okay, so this vector b. So what is so if I take the not, dot product of b not with w j, it is going to be the same as the dot product of b and w j. So what is this going to tell you? This is going to tell you that w j is orthogonal to w j is orthogonal to b minus b not. If w, if b minus b naught is orthogonal to w j for every j, it is going to be orthogonal to every linear combination of w one w two w k. B minus b naught is orthogonal to every linear combination of w one w two w k. But w one w two w k spans v, right? So b minus b naught is orthogonal to everything in v. B minus b naught is going to be orthogonal to every single vector in v. Now b naught is in v. And I take an arbitrary vector little v in v, and the difference is also going to be in v. So b minus b naught is going to be orthogonal to b minus v. B minus b naught is orthogonal to b minus v. Means let us apply the Pythagoras theorem. It means that norm of b minus b naught squared plus norm of b naught minus v squared equal to the norm of the sum, the norm squared of the sum. There will be norm of b minus v squared. So. Knock off one of the terms on the left hand side. We conclude norm of b b naught minus v squared less than or equal to norm of d minus v squared, and v is completely arbitrary. So this inequality holds for all vectors in v, and that shows that b naught does do the job of minimizing the <coughs> squared difference, uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, the norm square of the differences b minus. V. And so B naught is indeed a solution of the problem that we are trying to solve. So I think with this, I will close this capsule. Thank you.